Hello guys, I hope you're doing well. Welcome back to the most amazing top 10. My name is Danny Burke, Instagram down there, and this is the channel where we take all kinds of weird and wonderful things from all over the world and turn them into a nice little top 10 list so you guys don't have to. And today, we've got the top 10 lies we learned in school. Now just to be clear guys, the teachers or textbooks that taught us these things might not have been intentionally lying to us, but with the knowledge we have today, we certainly can't call them the truth anymore. So let's look at 10 of these school lessons misconceptions and jump into this like we always do guys with our number 10, the fact that we don't have five senses. We're always taught in school that humans have five senses, sight, hearing, taste, touch and smell. Although there's no doubt that these are senses, they are not the full story. Some neurologists believe there could be anywhere up to 21 different distinct human senses. These include your sense of balance, organic senses such as hunger or thirst, and lesser known senses such as proprioception, which is your brain's knowledge of the relative positions of your body parts. My way of describing that sense is when you first wake up, you instantly know where your different limbs are without having to see, taste, touch or smell them. And if you can, smell your limbs when you wake up, I think you might need a shower, my friend. On to number nine, and I want to ask you guys, who was the first European to discover the Americas? If you said Christopher Columbus, I'm afraid your school let you down big time. Columbus sailed the ocean blue in 1492. That's the phrase parroted by school children across the world, teaching them that Christopher Columbus set sail from Spain and was the first European to set foot in the Americas. But it was actually the Vikings who were the first to reach North America with settlements in Newfoundland modern day Canada, and even evidence of trading with the Native Americans they came into contact with. They got there around 1000 AD, which means Columbus and the history lessons you had were almost 500 years too late. Alright, moving on now guys, if you're watching this video, you're probably not too far from a light bulb, but at number 8, you'd be wrong to think Thomas Edison invented it. Huge inventions like the light bulb can often be hard to credit to one person, but if you had to give it to anyone, give it to Humphrey Davy and Joseph Swan. They both developed working electric lights well before Edison, but it was Edison who was credited with developing the first commercially viable electric light. He discovered that by using carbonized bamboo as a filament for the bulb, a bulb could glow bright, last a long time, and be cheap to make. It was that last factor, the cost, that made his patent the most popular version of the light bulb, which is why a lot of people give him sole credit for the invention. Interesting stuff. So let's move on to number seven, and I want you guys to complete the sentence. You are as blind as a... If you said bat, I'm afraid you're wrong. It was often taught to us in school that bats only use echolocation to get around as their eyesight is so poor from evolving in dark caves. The truth though is that all bats have eyes and are capable of sight. Various types of bigger bats can even see three times better than humans. And almost all bats in the mega bat or fruit bat family cannot even echolocate and have excellent night vision. They have large bulging eyes and rely on them solely to locate their food. So next time you guys meet someone that says bats are blind, tell them to just open their eyes. Pun intended. At number six, when you were learning about gravity at school, this guy was probably brought up. Isaac Newton. He's credited with coming up with the universal law of gravitation, which is the basis of how we understand gravity today. Big stuff. But many people are taught that the idea just hit him one day, quite literally, when an apple fell from a tree and onto his head. It's not a million miles from the truth, but Newton actually just witnessed an apple fall from a tree in his mother's garden. After seeing how the apple always falls in a straight line to the ground, he went and developed his theory. I'm glad we cleared that up. And would you look at the time, we're already halfway through now at number 5, and we're going to be talking about Vincent van Gogh's ear. A lot of us were taught in history or art class that famous Dutch painter Vincent van Gogh cut his left ear off and gave it to a prostitute. He apparently did this after having a huge fight with his friend who was also an artist. The truth that has come to light in recent years is that it was actually Vincent's friend who did it. He was an avid fencer who drew his sword when the two were having an argument and somewhere along the lines he took a swipe and accidentally cut off part of Vincent's ear. But letters between Vincent and his brother after the event seem to point to the fact that instead of him reporting this to the police, Vincent decided to make up the story about him doing it himself in order to save his friend from jail time. Well it seemed to fool the 
police way back then and it still seems to fool a lot of people even to this day because a hundred years after the event people still wrongly think that Vincent cut his own ear off. Now though we're at number 4 and we're going to be talking about how many states of matter there are. Most people were taught at school that there are just 3 states of matter, solid, liquid and gas. Everything in existence falls under these categories. Although they are the most well known, they are not the full picture. There's all kinds of different states that matter can be in. Plasma can be found in everything from neon signs to the inside of stars. Liquid crystals have molecules that are ordered like a solid but behave like a liquid and the list goes on and on including Bose, Einstein, condensates and superfluids to name but a few. I think it's fair to tell kids that there are 3 states of matter but I think we should at least hint that there are other out there otherwise you'll end up like me, a grown man who only just found this fact out today. Now there guys we reached number 3 and we're going to be talking about the misconceptions between tongues and taste. Does this tongue map look familiar to you? It claims to show the different areas of your mouth that are responsible for all kinds of different tastes. Bitter at the back, sour on the sides, salty in front of that and then sweet right at the front. It first appeared in 1942 at Harvard University after a man called Edwin Boring, yes that's his real name name, misinterpreted a German study and drew the first tongue map. Before anyone knew what was going on, they found their way into countless biology textbooks all over the world. We now know that the entire surface of your tongue is responsible for detecting all kinds of different tastes. At number 2 now, we all know that diamonds come forever, but if you thought that diamonds came from coal, well I'm afraid you're wrong, but don't worry because I thought that too so we can both be wrong together. Coal is made up from the carbon remains of ancient plants that lived up to 450 million years ago. The the thing is, most diamonds on the planet date back to before 542 million years ago. That means most of the diamonds ever made were already diamonds almost 100 million years before the first ancient plants ever appeared to eventually form coal. So most diamonds aren't made from coal, but you can use coal to make torches, or so I've heard. Alright guys, so at number 1 we're going to be talking about how the greenhouse effect is caused by global warming or not. Now guys don't get it twisted, global warming is a real thing and all the evidence seems to point towards humans being to blame for the rising temperatures of earth but somehow the greenhouse effect got lumped in with all of that along the way. The greenhouse effect is an absolutely essential part of nature that involves our atmosphere trapping some of the radiation heat that hits our planet and bouncing off and absorbing it instead. This makes the atmosphere and our planet a lot warmer than it would be without any atmosphere at all, which gives us the climate needed to sustain life. It's a totally natural process, but it's when humans release too many greenhouse gases into the atmosphere that we really start to create a problem, but that's something for a whole other video. Alright guys, that's all we got time for. Did you learn anything new from this video? Do you have any good misconceptions yourself? If you have any of that, let me know in the comments below. Also let us know what you want us to do in the future. If we like your suggestions, we'll turn it into a video. Video just like this one. Thanks so much guys for subscribing if you have already. Your reward is being able to stay up to date with our daily videos on this channel. Two of them are flowing over there right now if you want to watch more right away. In the meantime, thanks as ever for watching Most Amazing Top 10. My name's Danny Burke, Instagram's down there and I'll see you guys soon.